Hello and welcome back. I wanted to get, welcome you back to the second to last uh, video on this restoration. Um, I was going to do a video, or part of a video I guess, showing you uh, the alignment on, me doing an alignment on this. Uh, as you recall, the alignment was only off by I think 5 kilohertz. Uh, at least on the uh, AM band. <clears throat> but I wanted to use the, I wanted to see if I could use the dial from the 624 here. And um, so I, I put the dial in there and one of the first things that happened was when I had gotten the new cover for the bench here, the new cork, uh, yeah, I cleaned the whole table off and um, you know, I had to take it outside because I had to sp spray it with uh, adhesive uh, to, you know, so this could stick and not slide around. Well, <laughs> I put it in a safe spot. I put the uh, probe uh, for my vacuum tube voltmeter, uh, and then uh, I spent most of the weekend trying to find it, and didn't actually find it until earlier today, after all was said and done this being Wednesday. So I was, <laughs> I spent all that time, you know, a couple, a few hours and several trips over to the Radio Shack and to Fry's, uh, getting parts and ordering parts for this uh, vacuum tube voltmeter so I could specifically to use it for this and then uh, as fate would have it, I was unable to use it because I couldn't find the stupid probe. So I had to pull out my old Radio Shack uh, analog meter, which which is normally is okay, but the problem with that that particular meter is that uh, its ranges are um, let's see on the vacuum tube voltmeter the ranges are one and a half, five, fifteen, fifty, one hundred and fifty, five hundred and fifteen hundred volts. Um, the problem with the Radio Shack one is that its ranges are, uh, 5, 25, 50, 250, and 500. Uh, normally that, I, according to the, um, instructions, uh, that shouldn't have, uh, I guess it shouldn't have been a problem, but the, the issue was that I had with this was I uh, followed the instructions and um, what I'm going to do actually is tell you uh, watch John's videos on aligning his 630B um, if you search on Philco 630B restoration videos 30 and 31 the process that he goes through on that radio is um, uh, pretty almost identical to this to, to this radio with the exception of the 610 here does not have a provision to um, align the, sh the uh, police band. Uh, and considering that the police band on this covers uh, 2.3 to 2.5 kilohertz or megahertz, I don't think, um, I really don't think the, the police was, was uh, much on this radio to begin with. And going through all the service bulletins, it looks like throughout the entire run of the 1936-610, they had uh, nothing but problems with the performance on the police band. Anyway, so uh, according to the Philco service bulletin, it said to uh, connect the connect up to the two lower pins of the speaker, which I did. These are these two right here. Um, the difference is, uh, of course, on the 630 has four uh, wires. This has three. But uh, I did as they had said, and I connected it up, and sure enough, you know, I was getting voltage. It was about 27 volts. Um, and <clears throat> the issue that I had was, at first, was... Uh, I could not get the voltage to, to move much um, unless I turned the attenuator on my RF generator to high and uh, used the fine adjustment to make it pretty high. And the problem that I had at that point was in order to get it high enough to get some good range, um, 
I, <laughs> I was getting up to 130 volts um, out of this thing. I don't know if I had connected it up wrong because as I said, you know, there's only three wires here to connect to on the speaker and, uh, oh, the other thing that it said was to connect, said to connect to the two lower terminals or connect to the cathode and the plate of the output tube. Um, well, that yielded, uh, <laughs> all that told me was that I was running at 248 volts and um, that didn't seem to fluctuate. And uh, but the one good thing was that I, I realize now that um, the output tube is, is running at 248 volts, although it says it should be running at 238. But since I was running at 123 volts, which is what I get out of the wall here, um, I did go through the isolation transformer and the variac uh, for safety reasons. Um, but uh, when I turned the uh, Variac down to 115 volts, the voltage dropped down to about 240, so that's pretty close to what it should be. Uh, at any rate, I, uh, <clears throat> so I, I went with the speaker method. Um, the I ran into a whole host of issues, well, not a whole host of issues, but some interesting problems with this. Um, it is aligned. Uh, it took me about five hours and changing out the dials twice. Um, I originally tried to use the 624 dial here and the problems that I ran into were not actually uh, when I adjusted the high end uh, which is these two uh, the oscillator high end is this one here Let's see if you Okay, so the oscillator high end is this one right here. Um, so I didn't have a problem with that. And the uh, antenna adjustment high end is here. Um, the, I, I, the first thing, of course, that I had to do is disconnect the grid cap here on the 6A7 and uh, connect uh, the antenna here, run it at 460 kilocycles, connect it to the ground down here, can't see that, down here, um, and the process was to align, um, let's back this off a little bit, process here was to uh, adjust it to the high end on this side, with this, this screw, high end on this screw, then this screw, and then this screw and then I just kept going back around until everything was fine and I ended up at 130 volts uh, that that was peaked um, so uh, then I went through the the procedure which was to do the the high end at uh, 1600 kilocycles on the broadcast band then the procedure moved down to the low end which let's see, you can see in that hole there, uh, which is the screw in the center there. And um, if you're very observant, you'll see that uh, oh, I'll be getting to the other problem I came to. Uh, then the next procedure is switch up to shortwave, adjust the high end, which is uh, which is this hole right here, the high end here and uh, that's the oscillator and then this here is the antenna and then alternatively come back to the short end which was at 7.2 megacycles and adjust the nut that is also in that hole around the screw so let's see if I can get it focused in on there so the problem I ran into was after I was done doing the short wave Low, uh, the low end of the short wave. I switched it on back to the broadcast band to test it, and the broadcast band was off quite a bit actually. Um, so I went back and start, I left the, os the uh, oscillator alone. I went back and did the procedure again for the broadcast band. So uh, after I f finished adjusting the low frequency, 
I put the hooked the antenna back up on the broadcast band, left the shortwave alone, and I went ahead and tuned in the radio stations. They were coming in. It was it was actually rather sensitive considering it was after dark, and you know all of our stations, as with most places, significantly lower their power. And I only had two alligator clips. That's 36 inches, and I'm in a stucco building. Um, so all that lovely chicken wire blocks out just about everything. And I'm not even that close to the window where I'm sitting. So, anyway, um, it worked fine and I thought, okay, great. So I went back and I did the short wave, um, again, the high end and the low end. Sure enough, I, I go back to the broadcast band and it's totally off again. So, upon further inspection, I discovered that the adjustment for the low end, the bolt is turning the screw, essentially. And so when I turn the screw, I turn the bolt. And when I turn the bolt, I turn the screw. So I, I tried to use a little bit of, uh, of, uh, uh, oh, what, you know, the stuff you use to unstick things. <laughs> I don't know why I'm forgetting the name, maybe because it's 11 o'clock on a Wednesday. Um, and that didn't seem to help. So I let, I let it sit for several hours and it would, even though I'd turn it, it would, they would, both would still turn. So I got this grandiose idea, um, in order to, whenever I would, adjust the short wave it would kind of bottom out almost bottom out the the outer nut for um, the low end adjustment so um, I tightened it down a little bit tighter and then I used my little fiber screw to, uh, my fiber adjustment to try to um, loosen the, the middle screw um, all that managed to do is uh, break my fiber uh, it's basically it's a wooden stick that sharpened it broke it so that was the end of that so then I tried to use my extendable screwdriver and normally you wouldn't want to use well you can it, it's it's not that difficult you just back off of it but if you use a metal screwdriver uh, in here um, to do your adjustments it, it can it can affect the adjustment Although pulling back on the screwdriver after you've made the adjustment and then kind of going back and adjusting it again, you can get it right. I mean, this isn't this isn't per rockets. Well, this isn't super uh, accurate anyway. But anyway, so then what happened is um, that I couldn't turn the screw. So then I did the stupidest thing that one can do. I got a longer screwdriver with a much bigger handle on it so I could apply more pressure to a very small, very old, very soft brass adjustment screw. So, um, you probably know where this is going uh, since you can see that uh, that is no longer got two sides to it. I broke it. <clears throat> Plain and simple. So, what I was able to do was um, I can get it to turn independently. I uh, ended up using a pair of pliers. Uh, unfortunately, with the, pro the close proximity of the 42 tube, which um, you may or may not know, like a rectifier tube, gets hotter than heck. So, um, trying to manipulate this, uh, I was able to get the, sc the screw to move somewhat on its own, burning my fingers several times, I might add. Uh, and eventually what I ended up doing was just tossing the whole thing out <laughs> and uh, just using my driver here to adjust the outer, the outer nut and uh, since it was turning the, the inner screw anyway, I worried about the the, the uh, broadcast band. So, consequently, the only thing really on the shortwave band is that the lower end of the scale is off by a couple of megahertz. Um, and since 
I don't have a backyard to have a nice shortwave antenna in, and I don't get hardly any shortwave here anyway, and this is not really going to be, you know, I didn't get this, wasn't fixing this setup to be a shortwave set anyway. Uh, I'm going to live with it. So after all that was said and done, I thought, well, uh, this is also, I had, like I said, I had switched the dials out a couple of times. Anyway, to make short story long, I ended up with the uh, 624 dial. So at least I have a uh, a real Philco dial, because we all know how much I hated that uh, Radio Days dial. Um, and I guess I better stop complaining about them, because there are some things I have to get from them. But uh, the only issue this dial really has is that it's darkened on this bottom end. Um, and that's where it was stuck, you know, for all these years. It was just sitting there, uh, right there with that portion in the window. When I bought it, that portion was what was in the window. Uh, I mean, in the uh, dog glass. So, another thing I was going to tell you guys, um, I discovered, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, not recommend you do this, just because um, I don't want you guys coming after me. <laughs> but uh, there were, if you guys live uh, anywhere in the Midwest, you'll know all about mud daubers. And this dial was covered in mud, um, and it, it had to be cleaned off because it was caked on. And as I told you before, you cannot use water on these. However, um, I got an idea. If you can't use water, you've got, there's got to be something you can use to clean it. So I actually took some 100% uh, um, alcohol, and I, I tested it on the old dial, which, as we know, was already washed out anyway. <laughs> Uh, and it did not take any of the ink off. So, throwing caution to the wind and knowing that if I ruin this, I still had the Radio Days dial, I used 100% um, uh, uh, alcohol, uh, got all of the dirt, grime, and mud off of there, and not one spot of ink came off. So, if you're willing to take the chance, um, I can tell you that from my experience, I used, actually, you know what, I didn't even use 100% alcohol, I used 99%. Um, because, um, I didn't really have that much denatured alcohol left, so. Uh, I was able to clean it off without taking any of the ink off, uh, using, uh, uh the 99% alcohol. Um, I know that most states only have 90% rubbing alcohol, but for some reason Texas has 99 so. Anyway, um, the alignment's done, the radio works, uh, it, the dial is pretty much on, uh, all the way up to, uh, I've only tested it up to 1600, my little, uh, broadcaster, um, I think it does actually go up to 1700, but there's all these little dip switches and you have to tune the antenna every single time you change them, uh, change the frequency, and I got kind of tired of doing that, so, <laughs> um, it's working, uh, and it's on, It's pretty much on. Plus, I also discovered afterwards that um, the mask in the back here um, actually shifts around. So, uh, if I move it, uh, if I move it all the way to one side, it's it's uh, you know 20 kilohertz off, and if I move it all the way to the other side, it's 20 kilohertz low. So I also have this adjustment in the middle. But anyway, it's. I'm satisfied with that. The radio works. I've been playing it uh, for the last couple of days. So the next video I'm going to do is actually going to be of it being done. And it should be this weekend because although it was cold and rainy today and will be cold and windy tomorrow, uh, either Friday or Saturday it's going to be up in the 70s. So I should be able to get the last two coats of lacquer on that cabinet uh, and uh, buff it out with some 4.0 steel wool and uh, put all the parts back together and I will be done. So, uh, one of the last things I wanted to tell you, because since this thing is running super long anyway, when uh, and I know I promised to do a deconstruction video of this, and uh, we will. Um, I did try to start doing one, but it turns out my SD card uh, that I use in my uh, camcorder here is uh, uh, well, it was messed up, so I had to buy a new one, uh, so I lost that video. But um, one of the things, I, when I pulled the chassis out of the 624, is that the uh, eccentric chassis washers are perfectly fine. They're actually quite pliable. Um, they don't even have any cracks or, or anything in them. 
which I find extremely weird because the bottom of the 40 years and the wood is all falling apart and the chassis is rusty but yet all the rubber parts are still perfectly new and pliable even the um even the washers for the tuning cond condenser are fine um so <clears throat> i don't oh yes i did okay so no i did not this is the old one uh, it uses all the same parts, and, um, geez, I don't know what I did with the other ones. Um, I think I stuffed them in a bag somewhere, but, gosh, I hope I can find them. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm going to reuse the, I'm going to use the old rubber parts as well. I'll just keep the ones I bought for a future restore. Um, that way I thought it would be kind of neat because the, uh, everything about the radio, with the exception of the, uh, capacitors in the resistors I replaced will be Philco and uh, from the same year and who knows maybe even out of the same box of parts that uh, the ones that made this radio came from. Another thing that I can also do maybe in the future after I've recovered from this <laughs> is the 624 here uses the exact same dial as the 610 it's got the I mean there's the 610 model number stamped right on it the thing with uh, this particular one is this is the one that comes with the parts on it with the uh, mask. So, except for, I haven't looked at how the switch works because the switch is what's, there's a, an arm that goes on to the switch uh, down here that, that actually moves the dial mask uh, so you only get the pointer for the band you're on. Um, I don't know if that would, re I don't know if, if that could be outfitted to this, but, um, when I deconstruct that, I'll take a look at it and maybe in the future, if I get bored, ha ha, uh, I might do that. But otherwise, uh, we'll go ahead and deconstruct this at some point here and, uh, butcher it for the parts, especially with the IF cans and whatnot. And now that this video has gone on for well over 20 minutes, um, I see that my camcorder apparently only takes 20 minute shots so anyway I'm done and uh, I will see you uh, when this radio is completed and we'll uh, play we'll play it so thanks again for watching and I hope this super long video here wasn't too boring for you but we're almost done or I'm almost done so hooray and on to the next um, project <laughs> Which, as I mentioned, is going to be that uh, Philco uh, 3812. It is another transformer set. I, 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 um, I at some point want to do a video when I have time to show you guys last month when I picked up all those treasures at, uh, at the radio auction, at the, my local radio auction. So, um, yeah, I'll try to find the time. Anyway, thanks again, and uh, talk to you soon.